average but all ACC quite frankly they are having their way with the Big Ten they have won nine of the first ten there are very few places in college basketball that get as loud as this place and although Indiana in a bit of a transitional stage new coach they got number one coming in they love their basketball here this one should be great it should be and what a tremendous atmosphere there is there at Assembly Hall the first true road game for these two freshmen the number one team in the country and Duke is great in the paint scoring almost 50 points per game in the paint and Marvin Bagley the third he is the leader of this team just a freshman 22 points a game 11 rebounds coming off three straight games in which he has just 15 rebounds uh, an outstanding player Robert Johnson he's the guy for Indiana that's got to get it going he has to score for Indiana to win I hope Terry Weimer DJ Carstensen and Paul Sells brought their earplugs tonight they're gonna need him in this environment ready to go here in Bloomington And it is Duke Ball. Let's take a look at the starting lineups tonight. Brought to you by Geico. The same starting five for Duke that won their bracket out of the PK-80 in Portland, including Marvin Bagley III having an incredible start to the season. And for Indiana, under their new coach, first-year head coach, Archie Miller, they've got some experience. They've got some guys who have been here before. Robert Johnson's been around. Newkirk is a fifth-year senior. And Deron Davis, how important is he tonight? With all the size of Duke, Bagley strikes first. Indiana doubling the post right away as soon as it went into Wendell Carter, but he passed it back out. And Grayson Allen made a great pass inside. You're going to have to have quick rotations out of that double if they pass out. Davis over Carter. Archie Miller is really high on Deron Davis, a guy that can score inside, but he's got to stay out of foul trouble guarding these big Duke guys inside. He's got Carter right now as it stays with Duke. Archie Miller, a great run over the last six years at Dayton. Four NCAA tournaments, a Sweet 16, and a lead eight. The younger brother of Sean Miller, the head coach at Arizona. Indiana plays a pack line defense. They want to protect the ball and protect the paint. Trent the kick. Allen with a shot fake. Trent for three. In and out. We got an early foul going against Davis, just what you talked about. One minute in, and Deron Davis has picked up a foul. Just the second time that Mike Krzyzewski has brought the Blue Devils to Bloomington. Most of the meetings between the two schools have been neutral site. They played here in 2005 in the ACC Big Ten Tournament. J.J. Redick leading the Blue Devils to a win. Trent gets free, but gets stuffed by Jawan Morgan. Jawan Morgan is the best defender on this Indiana team. He leads the team in block shots and got that one from behind. That was a bucket-saving play. Allen with a fadeaway jumper. And Grayson Allen gives Duke a two-point lead. Boy, he is getting that shot up as he is turning. You've got to be right there on the catch. That was not bad defense. That was excellent offense by Grayson Allen. With the ball for Indiana, freshman Aljami Durham. He's from Lilburn, Georgia. Second start for the Hoosiers. And a guy who Archie Miller says plays with a lot of maturity. A guy he really trusts. Morgan. Rebound Davis. Long three not there for Newkirk. Indiana, as everybody who's watched them in recent years knows, they love to shoot the three. The big concern for Archie Miller is how many threes they're given up so far this year. Bagley, nice look. Allen wide open in the corner. And Indiana in rotation. Could not pick off that first pass. Robert Johnson was late. That led to a wide open three. If you're going to double the post, you have to rotate out really quickly and find people. Bagley stepping out and knocking down an 18 footer. Gary Trent called for the foul. Well, Grayson Allen has not shot the ball well over his last five games, but this is a little out of bounds play. He's going to get a screen from Wendell Carter Jr., and he is turning as that ball is being caught and getting into his shot. His shot preparation is impeccable, even though he hasn't been shooting the ball well. He saw that one go through the net, and that can usually pick up a really good shooter. 
Fifth year senior Josh Nuker transferred from Pitt a couple of years ago out there in the backcourt along with Durham and Johnson. Nice up. Beautiful feed. And Indiana that put in two. They overloaded one side. Not very good communication by Duke. Boy, Allen probably could have drawn a foul if he leaned into Johnson there after he got Johnson in the air. Indiana in transition. New pass. Davis, and it's time. This noise, my friend. What a scene here in Bloomington. Well, how about this for your first road game as a freshman? Yep. Duval. Trent. Carter with a putback. Well, Carter just discarded Deron Davis, who hit the deck, and Carter was wide open underneath because of it. Indiana's size really drops off after Davis. If he picks up his second. They're really going to have to improvise against all the length Duke has. Davis. And that pass knocked out of bounds. Indiana getting the ball out. And Josh Newkirk doing a terrific job of keeping his head at the win run by Davis and a beautiful delivery in transition. Indiana's going to have to get some easy baskets. They don't want to have to grind it out all game long, whether it's man or zone that Duke's playing. Archie Miller was trying to tell his team in the inbounds play, hey, you got to watch the shot clock. Too noisy for them to hear him. Johnson knew it, and now it bounces off the leg of Carter. Out of bounds and back to the Hoosiers. Indiana has been sharp thus far in the basketball game. Last season, turnovers were a real problem for the Hoosiers. Last three games, they've only coughed it up nine times a game. Indiana 4-2 and two on the season. The losses here at home to Indiana State in their season opener, and then at Seton Hall. Nearly turned over, and making something out of it, it was Newkirk to tie it up. The transfer from Pitt, now healthy after all those knee problems, just stuck with it after he lost control of the ball. Duke is switching one through four. So one, the, the point guard through the power forward position, they're switching everything. Indiana can get a matchup that they like and go after that matchup. Ten to shoot. Good help by Davis. Corner three, Duval. Davis down with the rebound. Here comes Durham. Johnson. Robert Johnson's been averaging about 16 a game his last three. He's their leading scorer, but he's going to have to put points on the board for Indiana in this one. They double Bagley. Uh-oh. Is it Davis? It is. Deron Davis reached in on Bagley and has picked up his second foul. Early trouble for the Hoosiers. What do we come back on with? Great looking scoreboard here right about the court. 31 feet in length, 150 percent larger than the previous one and a terrific center for sports media and technology the mark cuban center for sports media and technology with all kinds of bells and whistles for young aspiring broadcasters trayvon duval who has not shot the three well this season knocks one down that's just his fourth three in 24 attempts well Aljamain durham didn't get a hand up and even though trayvon duval is not a great three-point shooter you still have to get a hand up on him during the drive, what a, an adjustment in midair to lay it in. Well, he is a really good freshman. Hardly makes any mistakes. Trent will finish at the other end. Duke in transition. Meanwhile, for Indiana, with Davis going to the bench with two fouls, Freddie McSwain Jr. now into the game. He gives everything he has, but he's only 6'6", and he'll be guarding somebody 6'10 or 6'11". And he is not a scorer. What he is is a rebounder and defender. A guy who looks like he could be a football player, maybe develop into an NFL tight end if things didn't work out professionally in basketball. And you talked about it right off the top of the show. They cannot get Davis in foul trouble. And he went over to double Bagley and picked up his second just five minutes into the game. What a finish 
by Joan Morgan. Nobody blocked out, and Morgan took advantage of it. 28 points against Arkansas State. Marquise Bolden in the game for Duke. Carter's going to the bench. Everybody's staying home for Indiana. Duval with a floater off the glass and good. Well, he's a good player, so athletic. And really changed his pace very well there. Didn't go a thousand miles an hour, just read the defense. What a switch. Devontae Green in off the bench for Indiana and got a foul called on Duval. And that foul because of the switch. And Trayvon Duval is not shooting a high percentage, under 20%. There you can see the Indiana possession, a great putback by Juwan Morgan, who's a terrific defender and a very good rebounder. And he's going to have to hit both, both backboards in this one. Knocking down the three won't hurt the Indiana pause. But Robert Johnson so far doing a very nice job on Grayson Allen. Duval gets into the lane and floats another one home. Now that's got to be very disappointing for Archie Miller. His defense is designed to protect the paint. They don't mind giving up a 20-footer, but they want to keep you out of the paint. Seven already for Duval and the Blue, Le Blue Devils lead by two, just over seven minutes in. Driving into traffic and finishing Devontae Green. Devontae Green taking advantage of Duke in ball screen defense. Not a good job once he was able to turn that corner, but a terrific job of attacking the paint and going right into the body of Marquise Bolden and keeping his eyes on the rim to finish that play. Boy, Devontae Green... You know, second on this team in three-point shootings, 10 of 25 coming into this one. He's been so consistent in practice, and you can see how talented he can be with the ball. Hoosier is back on top. Well, this is the kind of start, Dan, that Indiana had to have. Yep. Keep the crowd in it. Maybe try to rattle the freshmen a little bit, although they've played some very big games already. As you mentioned, this is Duke's first true road game. Alex O'Connell off the bench, and that'll buy in the crowd. Nice cut. Indiana decided on that possession not to come with the double because Marvin Bagley caught it off the lane. Morgan. Tried to get it over a couple of taller Duke defenders, but couldn't get it over the rim. Duke going one-on-one -on -one in the post. Good faith. Allen still going. Kicks to O'Connell. Duval right into the chest. Good D there by Newkirk. Bagley has it taken away. Green. Oh, oh big swing. Slams home the follow to put Duke back on top. And again, at least for the moment, quiet this crazy crowd. Well, that's where Duke has the advantage on the offensive class. This is an excellent offensive rebounding team. How about Freddie McSwain? <laughs> A 6'5 Ben Wallace with better hops. Shot here's clock the, at 10. Here's the guy that's got to get going, Robert Johnson. In some trouble right now, the kick. And the three won't stay down for Newkirk. Duval driving again. Tough to keep out of the lane. It'll be Duke ball when we come back. Indiana has been doing a good job of digging down in the post. They got the steal. And then the beautiful pass to Freddie McSwain. That was up by the square. Indiana playing well in Assembly Hall.
The Big Ten ACC Challenge continues with Notre Dame, Michigan State, tomorrow, 7 Eastern on ESPN. How much fun is that going to be a top five matchup in another great environment in East Lansing, Michigan? It'll be the Spartans taking on the Irish. And both coming off championships, if you will, during Feast Week. Allen elevates for the jumper, not there, and the rebound down to Newkirk. Tough shot because of the defense of Robert Johnson. Green thought about it, now puts the brakes on. And Indiana is smaller. The Hoosiers are going to have to do a great job on the glass because right now Duke has more offensive rebounds than Indiana has rebounds. Baseline drive, Johnson! Well, Indiana is getting to the rim, Dan, whenever they want. Colin Hartman into the game and out for Indiana. The fifth-year senior missed all of last year after knee surgery. This just his second game back. And a, a big lift, not only in the game, but in the locker room as well for the Hoosiers. Well, Robert Johnson just goes baseline. And you have to get, Trayvon Duvall's got to get further over if he wants to stop that drive. He's got to be in the middle of the floor right there. And Wendell Carter got screened off. But Johnson is a really good athlete and the top three-point shooter on this team. Juwan Morgan back into the game for the Hoosiers. Freddie McSwain. Uh, picked up his first foul. He goes to the bench. And again, Archie Miller said if he were 6'9", he'd be Ben Wallace. He gives everything he has. And they're going to need him a lot with Deron Davis picking up a couple of early fouls. And you can see that long look on the face of Davis. He didn't last five minutes in this one. Well, Indiana really did a good job going over Duke's out-of-bounds plays underneath. Duke runs their out-of-bounds plays out of the same alignment. They've got a bunch of different things they can do out of it. And Indiana very well prepared. For people who don't know as much as they should about Archie Miller, tell them what they need to know about him as a coach. Well, he's an excellent coach. Uh, he has a, a philosophy of the pack line defense, which is the same defense, essentially, that his brother Sean Miller runs at Arizona. It's the same defense that Dick Bennett ran at Wisconsin, that Tony Bennett runs at Virginia. It protects the paint. They get back in transition. They've got a halfback and a fullback, but they want you to prove it over the top. And he was a, a very good player at NC State. Did a great job at Dayton. Went to the tournament the last four years he was there. Went to the Elite Eight in 2014. And is really trying to lay a foundation down here for the way that he plays. Like Tom Green, Tom Crean, I think, did a, a, an excellent job in the way that he teaches basketball. It's just a different way now. So the entire team has to has to learn new habits. They have to learn it Archie Miller's way, and it's a different way. Miller's got some intensity about him, doesn't he? Just 39 years of age, one of the younger head coaches, and certainly when you take into consideration the level of program he's now coaching, this is, you know, this is one of the destination jobs in college basketball. Yeah, you don't leave Indiana. Yeah. It's, uh, it's one of the truly great jobs in college basketball. Beautiful backdoor bounce pass from Hartman to Green. Man, they are executing at the offensive end, aren't they? Colin Hartman makes a huge difference on this team because he can really shoot it. Bagley with a terrific pass down low to Carter. Yeah, if Marvin Bagley wasn't on this team, we would be talking about Wendell Carter being one of the, if not the best big guy in the country, one of the handful of best big guys. I mean, he's right there averaging a, almost a double-double, playing with the guy who's leading the ACC in scoring Correct. and rebound. And a guy who reclassified into this class, Marvin Bagley III, could actually be in high school right now. Well, he could be in high school, but, but he is the age of a college freshman. He's 18 years yeah. old. He's going to be 19 in March. So he's the age of a normal freshman. But you're right, he, he technically could still be in high school. Bagley. So could I, though. <laughs> Bagley averaging better than 22 points and 11 rebounds per game. And Carter showing the range on his jump shot. But well, he's got range all the way out to the three-point line. He's got a fantastic touch, can run the floor, and is a big-time rebounder. Leaves the team in block shots. Hartman. Great rebound by Morgan. I thought Devontae Green may step up and take a three when that ball came out. Johnson fouled on the drive before the shot. Indiana's doing a really good job with spacing. They're keeping the floor spread. It gives them lanes to cut and also gives them lanes to drive. 
You know, Archie Miller wants to get paint touches in this game. And you're going to have to do it primarily off the drive. This is not a team, Indiana, this year that you can throw the ball into the post. You're going to have to do it off of cutting and driving. Second foul on Trent, but at least for the moment, he stays in the game. Ninth meeting all time between the Hoosiers and the Blue Devils. Duke leading the series 5-3. And they've won the only game the two have ever played here. Duke switching everything out front. Shot clock at three. And the follow is good. Looks like Hartman got it. Indiana getting to the offensive glass, though, last couple of trips. Baseline Carter, yes. Well, that's a big time move. And to think he's just a freshman. Well, that was an NBA turnaround jumper. And Duke back on top by two. Johnson trying to drive on Allen. Allen stays in front of him. And Colin Hartman driving. Wendell Carter. Left hand and it goes. Indiana is moving Duke's big guys around and forcing them out on the perimeter. Allen to Bagley who slams it home. Oh, mistake there by Juwan Morgan. He should have been in the middle of the lane. Help side positioning is so important for Indiana. And that's one of the things that Archie Miller working on with this team. What a pass. Newkirk finds Morgan. And we're tied again. How good is this atmosphere? One of the very best in the sport. When they get it going here. Newkirk fouled on the dunk attempt. And it looks like he's okay as he's getting helped up. Better not go anywhere tonight. We got a good one go. Well, the Hoosiers have had their ups and downs in recent years, but when they play highly ranked teams at home, they have been successful. Now, granted, a lot of different faces in, in terms of the number one games, entirely different faces, but be number one Michigan here in 2013, be number one Kentucky here in 2011, and seven for seven, the last time that a top four team has come here to Assembly Hall. They are playing well tonight. It is tied at 30. And so far, Indiana's done a great job of getting the ball into the paint. 24 points in the paint for Indiana. 14 for Duke. Into the game, Zach McRoberts. And he instantly knocks the ball out of bounds. McRoberts is a walk-on. And the younger brother of former Duke Blue Devil, Josh McRoberts. He started his career at Vermont before transferring into Indiana. Trent and Duvall each playing with two fouls for Duke. Well, a nice job by Devontae Green to stick with Grayson Allen. Ball's loose and it is out of bounds to Duke. Indiana has been very alert and their hands have been active. When the ball has gone inside, they've been there to knock it away. You we'll have to think that Duke is going to want to go inside the Wendell Carter and Marvin Bagley the third. Shovel pass into Bagley for the slam. Good penetration by Trayvon Duvall. He's done a great job getting into the lane tonight. Yeah, he's second in the ACC in assists, six and a half a game. Newkirk for three. I think those back cuts have really softened up the Duke defense a bit. He had a wide open three. No resistance at all. The Blue Devils playing their ninth game in 20 days. And again, their first true road game. Allen with a baseline drive and a finish. Well, that is an athletic finish by Grayson Allen. Looked like he was going to throw that ball away. But made something out of nothing. Now a 2-3 zone. For Duke. Hartman. And McSwain met right at the rim by Carter. It'll be a held ball, and the arrow will give it to Indiana. But a great challenge there by Carter. Challenge by Carter. That was a meeting at the summit up top. 
And Freddie McSwain, great <laughs> athlete. Looked like Bagley might have gotten it from behind at first. And then Wendell Carter Jr. pinned it. The neck ball. And the initial signal was it is a held ball. And the arrow favors Indiana. See if the officials are changing their mind in the interpretation. I think it was about the shot clock. They're going to reset the shot clock here and put 30 on the board for the Hoosiers. Justin Smith into the game for Indiana. 6'7 freshman from Buffalo Grove, Illinois. And a guy they're very high on. Really good athlete and can rebound. Johnson misses the three. Out of bounds to the Hoosiers. Indiana's going to run different people into the middle of this zone and try to keep somebody behind it. So things may be open on the baseline. Morgan into the middle of the zone now. Still plenty of time to shoot. Newkirk with a tough pass. Got caught in the air and turns it over. The first Indiana turnover of the game. Bagley the drive and foul before the shot. And Bagley really hasn't touched the ball much in the last six, seven minutes. Sixth team foul. Newkirk will sit. Now Jimmy Durham, the freshman, back in. He knows some of the guys uh, on the Duke team. He's from Georgia, and three of the Duke freshmen are from Georgia, and they played against each other and oftentimes on the same team growing up. Allen, deep in the corner, knocks down a three. How quick did he set his feet there? And Robert Johnson, for the most part, has stayed with Grayson Allen, but if you're just a fraction of a second late, he is into that shot. The screen being set by Morgan. Now the long three, in and out for Johnson and Allen down with a rebound. Well, this zone defense changed the tempo of the game against Florida and Portland. And it has done so in this game on the road in Indiana. Immediate double on Bagley. He's going to take a three. And I think Indiana, even though he can make that shot, Indiana will take that more than him doing damage down in the post. Yeah, that was an in, impatient shot by Marvin Bagley. Too strong off the glass for Justin Smith. Well, he didn't make it, but that was a strong move. He went right into the chest of Wendell Carter Jr. and backed him up. Duval. Duvall from the corner. And again, another shot I think Indiana would accept. Duvall, not the shooter that Trent or Allen, either one of them are. Well, Indiana would not only accept it, they applaud it. They want Trayvon Duvall to take that shot. Morgan, out to Johnson for three. Kept alive by Smith, but the Blue Devils have it. Inside three minutes to go in the first half. Indiana cannot get a better shot. They just have to make it. Wide open three for Trent. They got a chance for numbers here. And Allen called for the foul, preventing the easy bucket. Crowd all over him. Nothing dirty about it at all. He went up and got the ball in addition to getting the body. And the Hoosiers will be at the free throw line when we come back. Coaches. I thought it was interesting when Mike Krzyzewski was talking about his one year as a graduate assistant here. It was 1975, and Indiana had a great team. But back then, graduate assistants could recruit. And he said he was out on the road all the time recruiting and never went to a an Indiana road game and never went to a home game on a weekend. He was always on the road recruiting. I had never heard that story before. And that 75 team, that was the year before yep. they were undefeated and won the national championship. But they, just well, about they, everybody thinks they would have had Scott May not broken his arm. They year. broke his arm and, and had a, played with a broken arm against Kentucky. 
uh, in the NCAA tournament. But uh, there are a lot of people around here that would say that that 75 team might actually have been better than the 76 team. Hard to imagine, yeah. but you know, that team with Steve Green and John Laskowski, and then of course the 76 team, Quinn Buckner and uh, Scott May, Bobby Wilkerson, Tom Abernathy, Kent Benson, just a, a remarkable team. And then Jim Cruz would kill me if I didn't say, and Jim Cruz. <laughs> One of two for Morgan. It's a two-point lead for Duke. Two and a half to go. And a great first half here with the Bloomington. Juan Morgan guarding Marvin Bagley the third. They like to isolate him on this left block. Off balance shot won't go. Kept alive by Bolden. And he and Delorier mixing it up in there. It's Duke another possession. Well, Colin Hartman was trying so hard to block out Marquise Bolden. That is a physical mismatch. He couldn't even jump. And right now, Duke just huge on the front line. 6'11 Bolden, 6'11 Bagley, and 6'9 Deloria. They've got three players taller than anybody in the has got in the game. Bagley open for a three. And it's Indiana ball. The Hoosier fans wanted it over the back. They don't get the call, but they do get the ball. Well, I think what they wanted more was an offensive foul on Grayson Allen. Robert Johnson had legal guarding position, and it was close. He's done, he's done a really good job defensively against an excellent offensive player in Grayson Allen. Looks like a 1-3-1 right now. Durham misses the three. Offensive rebound in traffic by Devontae Green. Well, Indiana has only turned the ball over once in this game. Amazing. Hartman, air ball off the head of Bagley, I think, and then he gathers it in. Duval with the left hand, yes. Well, that's where a, a difficult possession and a shot that nobody expected that to be an air ball from Colin Hartman led to some transition. And th this team, this Indiana team, can't give up transition buckets. Big minute 10 here with Duke now up by four. 2 3 zone. Green using the screen, lost his footing. Allen. And a foul. Morgan called for the foul. Devontae Green going down, and Grayson Allen looked like he might have gotten hit there, but definitely got hit the second time. And Juwan Morgan just going after the ball was just a hard foul like we saw on the other end. Yeah. Crowd doesn't like it, but really indisputable that it was a foul. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time, a game that you will be at. Number seven, Kentucky hosts Harvard at Rupp Arena. Then it's Kansas and Syracuse in the third annual Hoop Hall Miami Invitational at American Airlines Arena. Both games also streaming live on the app. You looking forward to that one? I am looking forward to it. First things first, though. <laughs> I'm enjoying this more. All right. Boy, this, is a, lead. this is a really important last 50 seconds here. If Indiana can get a stop and a score, they're going to feel a heck of a lot better at halftime because they'll have Deron Davis in the second half. A three for Johnson cuts the deficit in half. Timeout Duke. 30 seconds left in the half. Duke ball up by three against the Hoosiers. Since, despite being extremely undersized on the front line, though, the Hoosiers are hanging right in there with the number one team in the nation. Big possession right now for Indiana. Four second difference between the game clock and shot clock. That means Duke can take it all the way down to the end of the shot clock and still have time for a tip in. Allen the drive. Jump stop. And we have a foul underneath going against Indiana. Looks like they got Freddie McSwain. Twenty-one and one.
Tough to see from that angle. I assume it was. Did he undercut badly? Yeah. Yeah. They're saying he went under him. Yeah. Second on McSwain. He's looking for the evidence himself. Bagley started off the year not shooting free throws well at all, but he's been getting better and better. Went nine for ten in the win over Florida in Portland on Sunday. Yeah. He had hit 18 of his last 23 before that one. Trent goes to the bench. He's got a couple of fouls, so he'll sit out the last nine seconds. Jack White, a sophomore from Australia, makes his first appearance of the game for Duke. Still plenty of time for Indiana to get a good look here. Duke has not really gone to Marvin Bagley, at least it doesn't feel like they've gone to him as much as perhaps they should. But he's still been extraordinarily productive in this first half. Hit double figures, he's been on the brass rebounding. And one of the best players in the country of any age, but to think that this is just a freshman, it's absolutely remarkable what he can do on a basketball floor. And you never see him take a play off. Plays as hard as any freshman I can recall. Coach Cage speaks about it in glowing terms whenever he's asked about Bagley about how much he's enjoying coaching him. Indiana with the ball, down by four, 9.4 seconds to go, and a little pressure here from the Blue Devils. A one, two, one, one, three-quarter court pressure to slow the advance. Green probing, long three. And that'll bring the first half to a close here in the Bloomington, and what a half it was. Number one Duke leading Indiana 42 to 38 and an intense and a very entertaining affair. The Alfa Romeo halftime report comes your way. Welcome back to the Big Ten ACC Challenge, a part of V Week on ESPN. And what an entertaining 20 minutes it was between the number one ranked team, the undefeated Duke Blue Devils, and the Indiana Hoosiers in their first year under their new head coach, Archie Miller. Chance to catch your breath and maybe get your hearing back a little bit at halftime. That was a lot of fun. That was awesome. And, and Indiana really fought in that first half. I thought one of the big factors in the game, the last seven minutes of the first half, Indiana didn't score a point in the paint. They had 24 points in the paint in the first 13 minutes of the game, none in the last seven minutes of that first half. And that was due in large measure to the zone that Duke went to and you have to think in the second half that Duke is going to want to go inside to Marvin Bagley and to Wendell Carter who in the first half combined for 20 points and 14 rebounds that's where Duke's strength is in the paint and on the glass Ron Davis back in the game to start the second half for Indiana played less than five minutes in the first half picked up a couple of quick fouls did not return and Gary Trent and Trayvon Duvall both start the second half with two fouls for Duke. But then Indiana was three of 15 from three-point range in that first half, and they had some open ones, especially Robert Johnson. He's going to have to knock some of those down. Right into Bagley for an easy score. Just a little, little on big cross screen to get Marvin Bagley into the low post. And when he gets it there, he loves to go over that right shoulder. And it's hard to keep him away from it. 11 ties, 10 lead changes in the first half. Morgan into some traffic. And a tough catch by Davis, who draws the foul. Marvin Bagley getting a little cross screen here from a guard. That means you're either going to have to switch it or Jawan Morgan's going to be a little bit late. And still, able, even though Morgan played him on the high side, he's able to get to that left hand, which he does so well. He can use either hand, but much better and much more comfortable going over that right shoulder with the left hand. At the line for Indiana, Davis, the sophomore out of Park Hill, Colorado, who has lost 22 pounds since June, from 271 down to 249. Fouling was a big problem for him last year, and at times it still has been this season. But again, he's the only legitimate size that Indiana has. McSwain comes in at 6'6 and does everything he can, but he's 6'6. Well, Davis is a horse. He's a solid post player. He can seal, get step-ins, a good offensive rebounder, but he has to stay on the floor. 
There's that same cross screen, screen for the screener action. Now two big guys low. Allen might have gotten away with a push off. Instead, it's a bucket and a foul. Boy, when Grayson Allen gets a, he screens and then gets a screen from Wendell Carter. And when he catches it, he's got two big guys down low. And Robert Johnson just looked like he ticked him on that elbow. And Allen virtually automatic at the line as the lead grows to seven. Indiana, by the way, begins conference play in the next few days. Remember, the Big Ten is playing their tournament in New York a week earlier than championship week. Big, strong move there by Davis. So Indiana, after this game tonight, they're at Michigan on the weekend. Then they host Iowa next week. And then they step back out of conference to play Louisville and Notre Dame. What a rugged part of the schedule right now for the Hoosiers. Tough finish for Duval. Trayvon Duval is so strong and such a good athlete. Just got past Josh Newkirk. And Newkirk showed his hands, but he threw his chest into him. Just got behind him and threw his chest into his body. And still Duval going away from the basket, able to finish that. And Duval with a dozen already in this game. I'll tell you, Indiana looked awfully good when they got the ball into Deron Davis. He's got single coverage in the post and made a great drop step move. Working hard for position, and we've got another foul going on Carter. His second. Really good job by Davis to stay active, and when he got that contact, sold it a little bit and was able to get the foul. Boy, those are two big bodies going against one another. This, it's like old school post play. <laughs> you get single coverage, just back your guy down. Davis travel. Well, Deron Davis, he, he's not gonna be able to make a juke move facing up. And that's not the place to throw him the ball anyway. Archie Miller trying to get his players revved up. The crowd doing the same. Indiana led for some of the first half. But Duke has pulled away just a little bit here to open the second half. Now up by eight. Make it ten. What a tough shot for Grayson Allen. That's so difficult to defend. That little handoff off what looks like a wide pin down. It's just a dribble handoff. And he can turn the corner. Durham buries one from the corner. And Archie Miller will use a timeout here early in the second half. Number one Duke leading Indiana 52-45. When you download the app now. Duke leads Indiana by seven. And Grayson Allen coming off this dribble handoff action. He can shoot behind it. It's so difficult to guard. You almost guard it like a ball screen. And he did a great job of getting into the lane. Robert Johnson defended it very well. Took away that shoot behind three. Now, Allen got away with a walk there, but still a tremendous shot over a very good defender. But there's no question those feet were, were not down when he pivoted. A travel on Trent. That is just the fourth turnover committed by Duke in the game. Indiana's only turned it over three times. The Blue Devils are shooting over 59% on the night and Indiana just under 49 percent the Blue Devils lead by seven well, in order for Indiana to have a chance to win this game and to have success in the Big Ten season it's got to be a low turnover team they need to get a shot each time down and cannot give the ball away and in this game they've done a great job of valuing the ball and taking care of it Morgan and does a great job shielding the shot attempt from Bagley they got inside position. Those shot fakes were very effective. Lob inside Bagley. Tough catch and a foul on Morgan. Boy, what do you do? I mean, you get in front. If there's not really good pressure on the passer, there's not a lot you can do there. Juwan Morgan giving up a lot of size and a lot of length. Did the best he could. But you can just throw that ball up by the rim and Bagley can go get it. Morgan 6'7", 6'8", Bagley 6'11". The second foul on Morgan. Bagley gets it on the inbounds. Knocked away, Indiana ball. Newkirk in transition. Johnson for three. 
And Carter down with the rebound. He's having another big night on the glass. Nine rebounds already for Wendell Carter Jr. And now a touch for him. He can just take it. Left hand. Davis the rebound for the Hoosiers. And Davis did a nice job blocking out Marvin Bagley. Double drag. Newkirk had Davis for just a fraction of a second down low. Now they got a mismatch. Morgan trying to post on Duvall. And now Morgan comes out to get a touch. Well, they could have switched back there, but did not. Morgan with five to shoot. Trent gambles. And a reach-in foul against the Blue Devils. Boy, it did it right at the end of a clock. Number three on Gary Trent Jr. Indiana is getting some favorable matchups on the offensive end, but they need to go to those. You know, Newkirk had Marvin Bagley on him, and then all of a sudden Trayvon Duvall is having to guard inside. Indiana needs to take advantage of that. Johnson covered by Bagley right now. Johnson driving him. Somehow got the shot off and draws the foul. I think Indiana can do more of that. When you have Marvin Bagley switched off, even though he's a great athlete, he can guard on the perimeter. That's advantage Robert Johnson. He mishandled the ball, but still was able to get in there and get a, a shot off and get a foul. But Indiana can still, when, when Duke's in man-to-man, -man, they can spread him out and drive him. And, and Get the switch that they want and the matchup that they want. The problem they had was against the 2 3 zone, really. Davis out, Freddie McSwain Jr. back in. With all the loud moments that there were in the first half of this game tonight. McSwain's conversion on the alley oop was the loudest. Three point game. Away McSwain. Johnson again with a Bagley on him. Pull up jumper. Down to the rebound. Carter is 10th. He still could have taken that to the basket. I think, I think Robert Johnson settled there for a jump shot. Trent misses the three. Carter with a flush. What tremendous inside strength and board strength this Duke team has. It reminds you a little bit of North Carolina's strength on the glass last year, which ultimately helped lead them to the national championship. Yeah, a lot more size than your typical Duke team in recent years. A lot less three-point shooting. Morgan, double team, and knocked away Duke ball. Can't hesitate when you get the ball down into the post. You have to make a, a, a strong and quick move. Duvall is fouled on the drive. A timeout on the floor. If it's not Bagley who's doing damage underneath, Jay, it's Carter for the Blue Devils. Uh, Wendell Carter, a great rebounder, always goes after it with two hands, and he's a finisher. Renew uh, Syracuse and UConn, the 94th meeting, the Orange leading 55 to 38. And Syracuse, kind of an under the radar, really interesting team right now. Well, they're young. And they're very young along the front line, but it's a it looks like a Syracuse team. They've got good length. They play that zone very effectively. And Tyus Battle, just a sophomore, is having a terrific year. And Frank Howard's taken over the point guard position. Uh, there may be some names that people don't know, but they'll know them by the end of the year. Syracuse is a, an NCAA tournament team again. Well, we have a moment. Uh, tough day. This was in the news. Tough day at our company. A lot of layoffs, but 150 people, unfortunately, uh, let go today. A number of people who have been with the company many, many years. Chris Farrell among them, who uh, is such a big part of the production team for college basketball over the years. And just sending out our thoughts to uh, all of those people we have worked alongside for so many years. All teammates, all great colleagues. Johnson gets a tough one to go. Hoosiers back within four. Well, Indiana has settled for some shots, and that one was a tough one. That might have been the toughest shot that Robert Johnson has had to make in this game. And what, what an assignment he's had. He's had to guard Grayson Allen all game long. 
and that has to affect your offense. Double team on Carter, and a foul. It's the second, maybe the third time where a second defender's come into double team for Indiana and picked up a foul. Well, this is that cylinder thing. There, there's basically a cylinder around the offensive player when you double team. And if you invade that space and take that space up, and I, I think that, you know, when Colin Hartman came over, he went body to body, and that's where the foul was picked up. Allen on the drive and the kick. Extra pass. Trent open. Rebound Hoosiers. Green in some traffic, forces it up, and got bailed out, really. He'll head to the free throw line, but he was a little trouble on that drive. Well, it was the dribble that got him in trouble, trying to cross over in transition in front of a good defender. But he was able to corral it again. You know, he went, it went between his legs, and that, that is not the right move to make. But Devontae Green is so good with the ball, usually. And he wound up saving it. Third on Duvall, so he's got three, Trent's got three. Devontae Green, the younger brother, of course, of Danny Green, the former North Carolina Tar Heel, and here in San Antonio Spur. Bagley back into the game for Carter. One of two. Three point game. Allen for three. Tough shot, no passes. Boy, what a great job Robert Johnson has done defensively. And he'll finish at the other end to bring the Hoosiers within one. Allen underneath, O'Connell rejected. And Bagley splits a couple of defenders and lays it in. He is so talented. Almost every time, Dan, a bad shot is punished on the other end. And Grayson Allen, who has had a good game, a senior who's been through it before, took a bad one off, no passes, and it led to a runout where Robert Johnson could lay it in on the other end. Johnson's done a spectacular job defensively. Here's the last play. And Devontae Green had a chance to grab that ball, wasn't able to tie it up. But with that mobility, even without dribbling, Marvin Bagley able to pivot around and get to the rim. Really been an interesting few days, hasn't it, for the Blue Devils? They go out to Portland. They're trailing Portland State at halftime in their first game of the PK-80. They win it. They're down 16 in the second half to Texas. They win it in overtime. They're down 17 in the second half to Florida in the championship game of their bracket. And they come back and win it. Now their first true road game in an environment such as this. That's a, that's a busy week. Boy, it is a tough, a tough week. And when Duke was out in that PK-80 tournament in Portland, which was a, a phenomenal tournament, you know, they had so many great moments. And then they had moments where they looked as young as they are. But the fact that they were able to win three games and trailing in each was pretty impressive. Davis to Hartman. Hartman for three. The fifth-year senior, Colin Hartman, has tied the game. Duval to Delorier, and just like that, Duke has the lead back. Well, Deron Davis tried to stay with the, the ball, and there wasn't a rotation. And Johnson has Delorier on him. He can drive that matchup. Davis banging with Bagley down low. It's going to count. Dan, this is why Deron Davis needs to stay in the game. He got Marvin Bagley on his back, just bowled his way into the lane, and was able to get within two feet from the basket. And as talented as Marvin Bagley is, and as athletic as he is, he is not going to be able to stop yep. a guy with the strength of Deron Davis. Well, he did such a good job. Last time he caught it on that block, when he took it into the middle and then had that drop step. Well, he's, he's got post moves. He's a good player. Hartman saves it.
Do they go into Davis again? They should let him touch it because he has passed it back out. And you want to get some, some cuts off of him, too. Green to the cutter. Hartman is fouled. What an emotional lift. The return of Colin Hartman gives this Indiana program. An emotional lift. He's had two knee surgeries, two ACLs, but he's the X factor because of how he can stretch the floor. Until last week, it had been over 600 days between competitive games for Hartman, who tore up his knee in preseason practice last year. And there's the first lead of the second half for the Hoosiers. O'Connell and Delorier out, Trent and Carter back in. It'll be interesting to see if Carter switches on to Davis instead of Bagley having it. And now Davis will get a breather as Morgan comes back in. Well, if Duke stays in man-to-man, -man, Indiana can still have some success moving the ball and driving it. They want to get the ball into the paint, and especially with Hartman out there because he can drill a deep three, so he can stretch the floor for you. Duval had the pass deflected, gets it back. Carter. And Carter called for the travel. And Michigan State winning their bracket of the PK-80 in Portland. And as important as it is, I think, for all of us to see Bonzi Colson and Miles Bridges and Matt Farrell and Cassius Winston, it may be even more important to see what Mike Bray will wear. <laughs> what fashion statement will um, Mike Bray make in East Lansing tomorrow night? I, I saw a comment from him on that. As Johnson gets inside and extends the lead. I think you're going to be disappointed tomorrow night. I think Bray's going back to being a a regular coach tomorrow. Four-point lead, Hoosiers. A strong and athletic drive by Robert Johnson. Takes Grayson Allen right to the elbow, spins, and gets all the way to the rim. Trayvon Duvall a bit late in getting there. But then on that action that we talked about before, that dribble handoff action on the left side. Just picked up a foul trying to guard Allen. Three on Johnson, he heads to the bench. Green back in. Where he has earned a rest. Robert Johnson has played his tail off on both ends of the floor. And Green picks up an immediate foul. That'll be the seventh on Indiana. And that'll put Duke into the bonus. Both teams now in the bonus with 11.36 to go. Both teams have played a relatively clean first half as far as fouls and turnovers were concerned. Grayson Allen at the line for one and one. You know, Dan, thus far in the game, Wendell Carter and Marvin Bagley are combined 12 of 18 from the field. They've combined for 26 points and 18 rebounds. Those two need to touch the ball, and Duke needs to play through them going down the stretch. They're both in the game right now. Davis and Hartman up front for Indiana. Bagley is on Hartman. Carter is on Davis. More of a fair fight in the strength department with Carter on Davis. Duke switching. Carter trying to recover. Gets back in time. Ten to shoot. Davis. Gets inside again. If you're going to try to take away that middle when Deron Davis is backing you down, that's the second time he spun hard on a drop step. That's a big time move by Deron Davis. Bagley driving to the middle, bumped by Hartman, and it goes. Well, how about that play? Trying to isolate Marvin Bagley, and they have to keep going to him. You know, Colin Hartman is playing his tail off, but he's no match defensively. 
for what Marvin Bagley the third can bring. And at the Indiana shoot-around today, the game plan was make Bagley catch the ball as far away from the basket as possible. They did it. Make him drive to the right, into the middle where the help is. They did it. He just made a play. Yeah, the problem is there wasn't help where yeah. it should have been. Yeah. But he's driving to his right, then shoots with his left hand. And the three-point play brings Duke back within one. I'd let Deron Davis touch it again. If they're going to go one-on-one -on -one in the post, give it to him. Got a switch, now he's got Bagley on him. Green looking for him, finds him. Cross-court look, Newkirk for three. That might have been a shot fake and drive for Newkirk as the better play. And Carter's going to get a whistle for the foul here, using the right elbow to get around the defender. And didn't need to. I mean, he had the angle. All he had to do was make a quick and decisive move. Three on Carter. And a clear foul using that right arm to knock Deron Davis back. Well, I say let Davis touch it again. Sets the screen and now heads down into the post. Carter on. He's wide open. Six to shoot. Green will launch. And Duval down with a rebound. Duke looking to reclaim the lead. It'll be Allen. Too quick. No, you got to live with that one. That, that wasn't a bad shot. Baseline Green puts the brakes on and hits. Boy, what a strong move by Devontae Green. I'm sorry, did you say something? <laughs> <laughs> Carter will finish at the other end in a chance to tie it at the free throw line. Boy, Colin Hartman tried to wall up and stay between Wendell Carter and the basket, but Carter just out-muscled him. After setting that ball screen, he got picked up on the roll. Needs to get picked up a little higher. You got to bump him higher. If he catches it that deep, it's all over. It doesn't matter who you are. Morgan back in. Hartman picks up his third. Morgan, who's got three checks back in. And it is tied again. That is the 14th tie in this game. Boy, Jawan Morgan has done a nice job in this game. He's scratched in every category, double-figure scoring. He's been good on the glass on both ends. A couple of blocks, a couple of steals. And he needs to be active on the offensive end. Davis now being guarded by Marquise Bolden. Oh. Pass deflected and a foul by Newkirk. And it's two shots the rest of the way for Duke. Boy, Deron Davis was wide open. And that pass deflected, and not a good foul to send Duke to the free throw line. Newkirk becoming the fourth Hoosier to pick up his third foul. But Trayvon Duvall second in the ACC in both assists and steals. And how good was he in late game situations in Portland? Playing in that PK-80. Especially how he, he and Gary Trent performed down the stretch yeah. in, against Florida. When it looked like when they had been struggling throughout the game. Now this team can really, this Duke team can really score in spurts and defend in spurts. What well, was the number? 125 minutes they played in Portland because one game went to overtime. They only led for 37 of the 125 minutes and won all three games. Off the back of the iron, Duke ball. Trent behind the back. Shovel pass, Duvall. Again, Duvall much better as a driver than a shooter. They need to go to Bagley. Bagley's yelling for the ball. Instead, it'll be a long jumper by Duvall, and it belongs to Indiana. Not a good possession for Duke. And another terrific rebound by Jawan Morgan. Morgan the kick. Johnson the drive. And another finish. 
Two paint touches in transition for Indiana. Allen behind the screen, but it's going against Bagley. He just picked up his third. Timeout on the floor. Back and forth they go here in Bloomington. It isn't always easy to know where you stand financially. Multiple accounts, investments, insurance. It can leave you wondering how it all fits together. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you. 1364 to get your Atomic Charge wallet. So call 1-800-545-1364 or go to AtomicChargeWallet.com. I'm Nam Burke with an update. Miami and Minnesota, the Hurricanes had lost three straight games in which both teams were ranked, but Dewan Hill was bringing it. 23 points. Miami takes it 86 81 the final. Now back to a raucous Assembly Hall with Dan Shulman. That it is, Adnan. Thank you very much. Indiana 7 and 17 all time versus the number one team of the nation. 3 and 4 here at Assembly Hall. But again, they've won the last two times they've played number one here. Michigan in 2013, Kentucky with Anthony Davis, Michael Kidd Gilchrist back in 2011. That 2011 game, Christian Watford making the winning shot. And right now, Dan, Indiana is shooting 69% in this second half, largely because they are beating Duke off the dribble. They've moved the ball, and then they've, they've been able to get paint, paint touches off the dribble. 13 lead changes, 14 ties in this game. Golden knocks it away, comes up with it, and is fouled. Marquise Bolden making a big play for Duke. Boy, that was a big play. First to the floor. And he wound up having Jawan Durham on top of him here, and that's where the foul was called, just rolled right over him. Golden, the former McDonald's All-American, a sophomore, playing behind Bagley and Carter. So not getting a ton of minutes. His first trip to the line tonight. But a guy who on just about any other team in the country would get, be getting a lot more minutes than he does as a Blue Devil. He's every big guy on this team. Uh, Javin Delorier would yeah. be getting a lot more minutes yeah. if it weren't for Bagley and Carter. Antonio Brankovic. I mean, there are a lot of good big guys on that bench. Another time. Grayson Allen guarding Robert Johnson. And Archie Miller is fired up over on the sideline right now for the Hoosiers. Well, his team has played hard on both ends of the floor. But Jawan Morgan was wide open. Rejected by Bolden. That pass has to go in there right away. I mean, he was he was open as soon as he was under the basket, let alone when he got outside the lane. Nine on the shot clock for the Hoosiers. Newkirk to inbound. Indiana four and two on the season. The lob knocked away by Bolden. Another big play. Duval off balance, lost it. Morgan is running home. Got to watch the back pick here. And post isolation. Bagley, the kick, Trent for three. In and out. Green, bounce pass, and the finish for Davis. What a feed! Duke's going to look to get the ball to Allen now and then look inside. What a pass that was. And what a game. Trent into Bagley and a chance for three. That's, and if it's Morgan, it's his fourth. That's just a question, Dan, of where you catch it. Yeah, Marvin Bagley caught it two feet in the paint. And there's nothing that Jawan Morgan can do there. You just have to wall up. You bring that arm down. You're not only get. This pass is absolutely magnificent. 
I mean, he threw that right from Marquise Bolden's pocket. Talk about a pocket pass. That was right on the money. And a terrific screen and shape by Deron Davis. Morgan is fourth. He goes to the bench. Hartman takes his place. McSwain has come in for Davis as well. So Indiana smaller. Well, Morgan may be out for a couple of minutes, but he'll be back. He's been a huge factor in this game for the Hoosiers. 21 for Bagley. It's a one-point game. Well, you have to think that Robert Johnson is where you want to go here. Green the drive. Ten to shoot. Johnson lost it. Then we have another foul going against Indiana. Or was it just out of bounds? No, it was a foul. But Johnson got just got going too fast. You know, caught the ball, tried to rip through. And that was a huge play, making a mistake that cost him not only the ball, but the foul. You can't show the ball there. You've got to rip through high or low. But that was right at his waist and just begging for a good defender to take it away. I mean, just hurts Indiana in so many ways. They don't get a shot. The foul on Johnson's his fourth. And it's two free throws now for Gary Trent Jr. Who's the top free throw shooter, yeah. 95 percent. Yeah, 20 for 21 on the season. That was a huge, huge turn of events. And although it was a it, look that was a really good steal by Gary Trent But if you're if you're looking at it from Indiana's perspective, you would call that a, an unforced error So Johnson has to sit he and Morgan each on the bench with four fouls And this is not a great offensive lineup here for Indiana Which means that they have to do a really good job of handling the ball and cutting Timeout Duke with 5.41 to go. Well, the advantage for Duke this season, most of the time, has been their size on the inside. Bagley and Carter, and at times tonight, we have seen that again here in this game. Well, it is so difficult to deal with this tandem of just superstar freshmen with their size, their skill, their athleticism. Well, Marvin Bagley has been absolutely magnificent all season long, but if Bagley were not in college this year and had stayed in high school, I mean, how, what would the accolades be like for Wendell Carter Jr.? He's averaging close to a double-double himself, playing with Bagley in just about every minute. And he is super skilled, can shoot the ball, is incredibly efficient. A big-time rebounder that can run the floor, and both of these players are very good passers and just scratching the surface right now of how good they're going to be, which is a little bit of a scary thought. Juke by one. 5.41 to go. Indiana ball. The Hoosiers trying to take down number one here in Bloomington. If Duke continues to switch, Indiana can get a matchup that it likes. That's a tough shot. McSwain the follow. Hartman there to give the Hoosiers the lead. Well, McS McSwain cleared everybody out, grabbed the rim, but it didn't look like it affected the ball. And that just cleared it out for Colin Hartman to get that easy layup. Bagley over Hartman. No. Rebound Carter and a foul. But and we've talked about it, how strong he is going up when he gets the ball under the bucket. I mean, he went right over Freddie McSwain. I mean, right over him. And it's not like McSwain's not a great athlete. He absolutely is. And how many guys do you see that grab the ball every single time with two hands? I mean, coaches talk about it all the time, preach it all the time, but big guys don't do it all the time. And Wendell Carter does it all the time. Davis back in for McSwain. But Indiana has absolutely battled at both ends of the floor. Tied again. Seventeenth tie in this game to go with 15 lead changes. It has been fun from the moment it began tonight at Assembly Hall. 
See if Davis goes down to the post. Really good post feed by Green. Can't get the shot off. Repost and a foul from behind by Carter. You know, that's great basketball, Dan. Deron Davis didn't have it right away, kicked it back out, reposted, and then Devontae Green hit him with another great post feed. He made two good post feeds in one possession. Didn't have it, kicks it back out, and then Wendell Carter gets caught reaching with two hands on. That was really well executed, a terrific pass and a, a great job. It, it just shows when the, when the ball goes inside, though, you can't let it come back out. The foul on Carter, his fourth. Archie Miller talking about one of the offensive goals for this team is paint touches. Uh, in past years, obviously, they shot a lot of threes. The, there's been some change in personnel between last year and this year, and the coaching change as well. And what they're trying to do is get the ball inside a little bit more, but Davis misses both free throws, and Duke can take the lead. A horn set. Carter headed to the line yet again. Well, that was a great job by Wendell Carter on that little run screen. He didn't really slip it, but he just took the contact. He was gone right away. I mean, that was beautiful. And Colin Hartman can't get over there to get in his way. But, I mean, if you're going to guard that dribble and come off of him, he did exactly the right thing and just dove to the rim. Ron Davis stayed with the ball, and that opened up a, a wide berth for Wendell Carter to get to the rim. And Duke now leads by three. Bolden in, Carter out. McRoberts in, Durham out. Every whistle brings a substitution or multiple substitutions. Remember, Carter's got four, so both coaches trying to navigate their way around some foul trouble, playing a little offense defense with four and a half to go. Every possession critical right now. Bolden now defending Davis. Left hand and a foul on Bolden. Boy, every time they get the ball into Davis, just about every time, something good is happening for the Hoosiers. Well, the only problem is you know, Davis goes to the free throw line, not a great free throw shooter. He needs to knock these down. Gets the ball, gets the bounce here. Coming up next, join SVP on Sports Center. It's a big night in the basketball, including the Warriors and Lakers, the Wizards, and Philadelphia. Look at how Auburn may be able to defeat Georgia again in a big night of college basketball with no game bigger or more entertaining than this one here in Bloomington. One point game. The shot fake launches a three. Got it. Wow. Huge. That was, that was a big time fake. Well, you can tell the defense all you want. You have to stay down on that. It is hard to do. He's picking his spots, but he's having a really good game. 19 now for Grayson Allen. He's been very efficient. Davis again and fouled again. Was it Carter? Yes. Carter's out. Wendell Carter will take a seat for the rest of the game. Grayson Allen, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida, on the relocation pass, a great fake step back and drains it. What a game in Assembly Hall. You smart holiday shoppers will be glad to know Buick.org slash donate. All donations benefit the B Foundation for Cancer Research. Dan Shulman, Jay Billis, back with you at Assembly Hall here in Bloomington, the home of the Indiana Hoosiers, who are in a, an unbelievable game, a battle here with the number one Duke. And that Wendell was a, Carter Jr. is fouled out. And that was a big play to have him on the bench with five because Wendell Carter Jr. was magnificent in this game. 18 points, 12 rebounds, five of them on the offensive end. A couple of blocks. He was seven of nine from the field. And think about this, like Marvin Bagley is leading the nation with six double-doubles. And 
Wendell Carter, who's playing with a guy that has six double doubles. He's got five right. now. <laughs> and this is their ninth game of the season. And this is the guy we talk about second. Meanwhile, Deron Davis is making good plays and getting to the line, but he's not making his free throws. He is four for eight on the night. Well, he's been terrific all night long. Wonder what he could have done if he had stayed out of foul trouble early on the game, picked up those two early ones, and sat the rest of the first half. Four for nine, and he's missed his last four. Still trying to isolate Marvin Bagley. Allen gets it to him. Bagley getting around and banking at home. What a move. So how do you stop him? It's one Morgan's a good defender, but he can't. He can't keep Bagley from getting that position, and he's getting caught behind. It's 23 for Bagley now. Johnson floats one up, left it short. Davis kicks it out. Shot clock didn't reset. Five to shoot. Newkirk the drive. Tough one over Allen. Left that one short, and Duke's got it. Duke can use some clock here. Six-point lead, don't need to be in a hurry. Same play, they're going to... little back screen to isolate Bagley in the low post. Nice find in the lane, and it goes for Trent. Boy, what a great cut by Gary Trent. From the opposite wing, just cuts right in the middle. And an example of Marvin Bagley being a willing passer and a good passer. You see on the right of your screen on the wing, guarded by Robert Johnson. Johnson turned his head, looked like he was going to go maybe double team. I don't know what he was faking at it. But Gary Trent went right in the middle of the lane and got hit with a bullet from Marvin Bagley. Third assist of the night for Bagley. And the lead grows for Duke. All of a sudden, it's nine in a game that was back and forth for almost the entire second half. It's remarkable the poise that these freshmen have shown in difficult situations. You know, when they've been down, when the game's been on the line, you know, they haven't been in these situations before, but it doesn't, it doesn't look at They've played their best basketball in the closing minutes against Texas, in the closing minutes against Florida, and now up to this point in the closing minutes of this game against Indiana. So in the second half against Florida, well, Duke really took the three-point line, the three-point shot away from the Gators. And actually on the game, wound up making more threes than Florida did. If you watched that first half, you would have thought that was an impossibility. Mm -hmm. Robert Johnson at the line now for the Hoosiers. Well, really, in a way, Duke's done a similar thing. You know, this is not the same kind of three-point shooting team that Florida was, but the defense tightened up a, a, a good bit over the last three minutes. You know, when the game was on the line, last four or five minutes, you know, Duke's defense has stepped forward a little bit more than it did earlier in the game. A couple of free throws for Johnson to make it a seven-point game. So I really respect the way Robert Johnson plays. Both ends of the floor. Senior out of Richmond, Virginia. Same play. Yep. They're going to keep running it. And Johnson will not let Allen catch it. Holding the handoff for Allen. Will they be able to get it into Bagley? Fade away instead for Allen. Oh. Tough shot. He's had a really, really good night. Overshadowed a little bit by the inside play of the Blue Devils, but when they needed a bucket, Allen has delivered. And he's been so efficient. Yeah. Johnson inside, out of bounds, another Indiana turnover. But Grayson Allen using a ball screen twice. That was a little handoff. But the nice step back, and that is not an easy shot. And he's made degree of difficulty on some of the shots he's hit tonight has been pretty darn high. 21 points on 11 field goal attempts. He's 7 for 11 from the floor. He's made a couple of threes. He's 5 for 5 from the line. And Duke has a 9-point lead with a minute to go. And what was a back-and-forth affair and an unbelievable atmosphere for about 36, 37 minutes now going Duke's way. Trent with the offensive rebound. 
and it looks like the Blue Devils in another tough test first true road game it looks like they're going to move to 9 and 0 and stay undefeated on the season. I don't know why Indiana didn't foul right away after that offensive rebound. They waited forever. Boy, this was a, a great environment for a basketball game. And to have a young team come into this environment, after all the basketball Duke has played, what, in the, in the last 20 days they played that nine games? Nine games, yeah. Pretty impressive for a group of young players to do this. Big Ten ACC Challenge wraps up tomorrow night with a great game. Number five, Notre Dame. Number three, Michigan State. Seven o'clock Eastern time from the Breslin Center. It'll be another great environment. The ACC winning the challenge handily this year. Johnson inside. Morgan no. And Morgan fouled by Deloria. Indiana fought hard and gave Duke all they could handle for about 36 minutes tonight. But the Hoosiers will take the loss to fall to four and three. And again, conference play begins in three days for Indiana. The Big Ten tournament a week earlier this year. So every team is playing two conference games next week. Indiana goes to Michigan, then they come home to face Iowa. Then they step back out of conference, they go to Louisville, then they play Notre Dame in Indianapolis pretty rugged part of the schedule well the Hoosiers have to feel pretty good though I mean th this was a, a step forward even though it's a loss and I know that nobody likes to hear about moral victories if Indiana plays with this type of intensity and defends at a high level the, the start to the Big Ten is gettable for them you know, both Michigan and Iowa are gettable games for Indiana to start out conference play and Robert Johnson fouls out but he, he had a really good game had the toughest assignment defensively to try to stick with Grayson now in the majority of the game he's a good player and Trent can add to his totals as for Duke after this game they head home and on the weekend they will host South Dakota you can see that game on ESPN 2 they've got five games in December four of them are at home and one game at Boston College they've got a a league game as well in December. Green for three. And Trent runs down the long rebound. Just 17 seconds left. And it looks like that's going to be all. No more fouls. It'll be a 10-point win for the Blue Devils, which doesn't really accurately reflect the way this game went for about 36 minutes, but for this young Duke team, four freshmen who are starters, another tough test, and they pass it again. Number one, Duke remains undefeated. They beat the Hoosiers 91 to 81 here at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Don't forget Notre Dame and Michigan State, 7 o'clock Eastern time to wrap up the Big Ten ACC Challenge. You can see it tomorrow here on ESPN. For Jay Billis, I'm Dan Schulman, and thanks for watching. Now let's send it to SVP with Sports Center.